Hi guys, check this out. So I have my analog goggles and my analog video transmitter. <clears throat> I am making the plunge and I am moving to HD and the ecosystem that I have chosen is going to be walk snail. So I have this little Avatar Nano V3 kit. So it it's going to be replacing my Immersion RC. So this little guy right here is going to go right on top. And then I'm going to change out the camera with this one. As for the video receiver, I wanted to keep my analog stuff. So I got the Walk Snail Avatar video receiver. And this is pretty cool because what I did is I printed out a little TPU piece and it slides over my fan in the goggles and it fits right there. So there's an HDMI plug at the bottom. That's what you plug into your goggles, but it's real easy for me to have a temporary but kind of permanent solution to hook everything up to my goggles and still retain the ability to do the analog FPV. So I'm running iNAB on this wing, so I'm going to have to do some changes and hopefully everything will come out good. All right, I got the Avatar HD VTX installed, so that's looking good. In fact, I think it really cleaned up the wiring. This is the camera that used to be on it, and so there's like five or six wires going from there, and then this is the old VTX that was on it, and I had uh, six or seven wires going from it. So I was able to reuse some of the wires. I was able to use the positive and ground from this that's just a direct feed from the battery. And then the camera took up a couple of UARTs on the flight controller so I didn't need to re-solder anything on the flight controller that happens to be in there. So it really kind of cleaned up the wiring. You can see some of the wires or the solder pads over here. This was the, the camera input from the BTX and the, the camera, so this definitely saved some wiring. All I need to do now is just make dent and see how well that the HD stuff does. I also went into iNav. Um, I needed to change one setting on the ports tab to um, make it see this and then uh, do a few changes in the OSD to make it look similar. I think it came up pretty good. Let's see how the flight goes. Since I didn't video the actual switching of the VTXs, um, this is really what I did. So here is my wiring diagram. You see I have my old analog VTX and my old analog camera. So the first thing that I needed to do was take out the VTX and I'm going to use the power leads. So the power leads come from pretty much straight from the battery. This cable went to a UART on my flight controller so that I could change settings on the VTX. So I got rid of all of those and I don't need the camera wire that goes to the VTX. So I got rid of that. On the camera, these two UARTs are the ones that I'm going to use for my avatar unit. So I'm going to get rid of that camera. I don't need the camera wire and I don't need the positive and negative wire. So all I need to do is take these two wires and move them over there. So now that I have this, so here's my new Walks now Avatar, the Mini V3, super, super clean wiring. So it's getting its power directly from the battery. And then the TX and RX are going into these two UARTs. Here's what I had to do in iNav. So iNav has this demo mode that's pretty cool, so I don't have my flight controller hooked up to it. But this is how it was set up in analog. This is what my OSD looked like. So the only changes I needed to make were up here on the ports. I needed to change the one that was um, where my camera was. 
and I need to just switch it to where it says the MSP display port. So as soon as I do that, I'm going to click Save and Reboot. And now that my ports say this, I'm going to go to the OSD. So here is what the OSD looks like now. So it may have started on HD0, but we are going to make sure that we put ours on Avatar. And you can see where the old OSD was, and we've gained all of this real estate. So now all I need, you need to do is move your stuff over and kind of spread things around. I've already done that through the magic of video editing. Here is my new OSD with the Walksnail avatar system. So pretty much everything's in the same spot that it was. I've just spread it out. Let's take a flight and see how well it does. I went ahead and cut some parts out. It's not the most interesting video since this is only the, the second flight that I had. I still need to figure out why some of the OSD elements are disappearing. I also need to um, adjust my camera angle, maybe make it go down a little bit. Um, I'm here in Texas and it's always windy and things get bounced around a lot. But I'm here to tell you, I I'm never going back to analog. The picture quality was fantastic. It was super sharp in the video goggles. Um, in this case, I'm flying pretty much due east. The picnic bench that I was sitting at is facing south. With the analog system, by the time I would go over here, I would usually have to turn my head to the left um, to keep everything uh, going good. With this system, it just seems to work. And I have all of the stock antennas. I know a lot of people think that they're rubbish. Um, I still may go ahead and switch them out. But uh, for now, I, I think everything looks fantastic. I was able to sit comfortably on the, the picnic table. I didn't have to contort my body or do anything. Um, maybe the better antennas would keep the uh, OSD elements from disappearing. So that might be a thing. But... For now, I think that this has just been fantastic.
Right, I'm going to take it out of cruise mode and go into manual. I still need to figure out some things with OSD, like what does it mean when the home arrow changes from white to green? Maybe that means I'm going towards the, the home point, I guess. I, I quite, haven't quite figured that out yet, but um, yeah, I cannot say enough good things about this system. Everything looks fantastic. I'm just going to bring it in for a nice landing and then have a look-see at the video. All right, I just got back from a couple of flights. Everything went fantastic. So I got my videos and I copied them on my computer. So I double-clicked on one. How about this one? It's going to open up, and there's no OSD on it. I thought the OSD was supposed to have come on it automatically. Little did I know, I needed to go to this website, this Walksnail OSD tool website. And then down here at the bottom right where you click on the latest, and then scroll down and pick whatever one for the computer that you have. I have a Windows computer, so I downloaded this and ran it. This is what the program looks like. So what you have to do is you have to open up your files. So one of the things that I figured out, so I, I did two flights today. One of them is the, by default on my, I guess my video receiver, it, um, it recorded the videos and put them into five minute chunks. So when I ran this program, and you can see that I've already done it. The second video, the OSD was just a little bit off. So on my goggles for the second flight, I went ahead and turned the um, the file limit to 30 minutes. Um, I hardly ever fly that long that I'm going to need to record, but that way that it wouldn't be splitting up the video. So here's what I had to do. So I grab this, and you click where it says Open Files. And then you pick your file. So if it's the these two are the same flight, it just names them. And then this one was the second flight. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna pick this first one and then hit open. And you see how it gets the the video file. And then there is an OSD file with it. And then this SRT that is the um, the avatar stuff that you see from the goggles at the very bottom. So it can you can grab all three of them. And then the font file is something that you have to pick, and this is kind of nice, so you can kind of preview fonts. So you go up to Open Files again, and this time you find your wherever you have your, your font. And then remember, there are these crazy long PNGs. So this is my iNav, the sneaky FPV one, so I'm going to hit Open. And then it has the font there, and you can uncheck some things that you don't want to see. So if you don't want to see the latency, you can uncheck that. Um, if you want to add some things, you can check some of these. So after you have that, all you need to do is click Start the Render, and it is going to start encoding. Um, I have a pretty fast machine, but I guess it's not too fast because my videos were like five minutes, and it took about five minutes to encode. Um, you don't get a choice where it saves it. It just happens to save it in the same directory where it grabbed your video. So I have this one, and then it names the file the same thing, but it says with OSD at the end. So after doing this, and I have the OSD, I am never going back. I think it looks fantastic. Um, everything is super sharp. I love the OSD. Um, I say I wish I would have done it sooner, but um, I'm glad I waited because uh, all of these elements already work. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and we will see you next time.